a man gradually strolls through a backwoods, making sense of that he is Takumi Keano, until only a couple of brief hours prior, he was living like a normal Japanese person. He annoyingly questions why he could never have shown up at an alternate area and out of the blue runs into a red wolf, remembering it as a sea position beast. Extraordinary, presently he's battling furries in a different universe. He utilizes air shot to handily hurl it away and madly says he shouldn't have been tossed into a circumstance like this at every turn. He chooses to make sense of why somebody like him is battling beasts in a different universe. In a flashback, a kid speedily apologizes to him and gets kneeling down. Surprised, Takumi glances around, pondering who she's saying sorry to prior to understanding it's him. He questions what his identity is and where they are hearing which he gradually gets up and takes a gander at him, with tears taking steps to pour out of her eyes. Bothered, Takumi comments that he's making him seem to be a troublemaker so he presents himself first and the kid says she's Silphilol, requesting that he call her Sil. He asks Sil for what good reason he's here so Sil gradually makes sense of that according to Takumi's perspective. He's fundamentally a divine being, and this is one of the sacred regions. Stunned, he contemplates whether this is another trick however Sil guesses what he might be thinking and explains this isn't a trick. Stunned, Takumi asks how he could have read his minds so she says she only sort of knew and figured she ought to make it understood. Takumi requests Sil to give him a straightforward clarification from the circumstance, so he regretfully says he coincidentally wound up killing Takumi, staggering him. By and by, Takumi makes sense of that concurring for Sil. When he utilized his powers to attempt to repair a crack in space-time, he unintentionally utilized a lot of force and wound up hitting Takumi who turned out to be on the opposite side, which is the reason it seems like his life at long last reached a conclusion following 28 years. He adds that Sil was the person who made this body and Takumi was shipped to Etheria, a world which Sil makes do. Fundamental information on this world. Its language and different abilities have been imparted into his body. Takumi comments that notwithstanding this, he never realized he'd be moved to a woods loaded up with otherworldly monsters. He actually takes a look at his status and understands he's more youthful too prior to seeing he's arrived at level 3 because of likely killing the Red Wolf. He recollects how Takumi vowed to make his body solid. He looks at the guide and unexpectedly pivots to see a couple of children. He sees they're a kid and young lady and contemplates whether they're twins, letting it be known's peculiar since there ought not be any towns close by. He worryingly questions on the off chance that they're lost and on the off chance that they're with anybody yet they don't reply so he gets some information about their folks. After not getting a reaction from them, he contemplates whether he can sort something out whether or not he evaluates them. Checking their status, he understands there's no name and worryingly considers what he ought to do. He grins and guarantees them he's not frightening, inquiring as to whether they can draw nearer. They gradually approach him and he cleans the cuts and scratches on their body prior to recuperating the injuries and wound s they'd gotten. Then, he gives them two Lanka leafy foods, this is a space-time wizardry called stock, and he can place bunches of things here in a period suspended state so they don't decay. They excitedly begin eating up the organic products. He checks different fixings present in the stock however comments that he can't cook without preparing or a pot. Out of nowhere, he sees preparing and a pot and acknowledge Sil has sent them over. He provides the children with a difference in garments Sil sent, yet they can't wear it so he assists them with getting into the garments. He says he will pass on the backwoods now and make a beeline for town, inquiring as to whether they might want to accompany him. They take a gander at one another briefly and gesture in understanding so Takumi presents himself and requests their names, contemplating whether they even have names. Since they don't reply, he names them Alan and Elena prior to advising them to accompany him. Seeing that they're ready to effectively staying aware of him, he sees that they should have some endurance yet they're just children all things considered so they'll take a tidbit break in a little or perhaps a full feast. He recollects that Etheria has rice to despite the fact that it's called white grain here. Out of nowhere, Alan and Elena begin hurrying towards a gathering of Goliath hogs. He speedily attempts to stop them and chooses to utilize sorcery to overcome the hogs however acknowledges they'll get hit also assuming he goes after from this distance. Causing him a deep sense of shock, Alan and Elena effectively take out the hogs with a couple of kicks seeing which Takumi questions what in the world these long-term olds are. 
they pivot and stroll back to him, and he contemplates whether they ran off realizing there were Goliath hogs there. He requests that they let him in on prior to running off the following time they sense something close to them any other way he'll get terrified. He reviews they had an expertise called risk recognition, and concedes them being solid isn't an over-the-top shock considering they were totally protected in a backwoods like this. He comments that this makes it seem as though he's being safeguarded by these children and contemplates whether it's something terrible before the children out of nowhere pull at his garments and highlight an enormous bear that unexpectedly shows up near them. Whenever he spotted it, they run off and effectively take it out as he understands that they did really tell him and thankfully taps them. He places the bear's body into his stock and makes sense if he'll sell it when they get for town after which they can eat the meat as well. Indeed, even from that point onward, Alan and Elena continued to overcome the beasts for himself and later. He says they ought to make camp for now and requests that they assist him with get together some kindling. He lights a fire utilizing a start stone and says they ought to barbecue some meat and eat now. They joyfully eat the meat and he watches them cheerfully, commenting that they've opened up a great deal presently in the wake of being so careful when they initially met and contemplating whether that implies they've developed nearer to him. He utilizes a boundary stone to make a hindrance to safeguard them, while they rest and later satisfyingly comments that this was the start of his experience in Etheria. Takumi comments that subsequent to coming to this world, Etheria, he met Alan and Elena. They've been meandering through this woodland for three entire days lastly they show up at the town of Siren. A watchman inquires as to whether he's come from Gaia Woodland. At the point when he says he is, they dubiously take a gander at him, and he understands the risk level of Gaia Timberland is a position, and it is likely peculiar to have children. He explains that they came from the field since they needed a few restorative spices. They didn't dive excessively deep into the backwoods, and these youngsters are sufficiently able to protect themselves. The gatekeeper inquires as to whether they had the option to gather the restorative spices and encourages him to not roll the dice one too many times in excess of neighboring. He requests their IDs, astonishing Takumi who acknowledges Sil never referenced any IDs and makes sense of he's come from a wide open town so he doesn't have one yet. The watchman concludes oh investigate and deal with him here and gives them gems. Takumi understands this is a supernatural thing that checks generally your lawbreaker records. Neither the children nor he ought to have a criminal past however, they don't actually have substantial personalities yet. Beneficial thing it doesn't examine for humiliating exes. He clears them for passage and gives them their temporary IDs, advising them to make official IDs at the organization in the event that their visit gets expanded. Seeing the children gazing at him, the gatekeeper grins at them yet they take cover behind Takumi's legs. They securely get into town and contemplates whether the children fear outsiders perceiving how frightened they look. Right off the bat, he heads into a church building and inquires as to whether he can hear him. Sil right away shows up before him and inquires as to whether he's become accustomed to life here. He concedes he's no certain except for thanks to his enchantment and the advantageous things he's gotten. He's not actually struggling. Seeing Sil's appearance, he distrustfully inquires as to whether there's something he hasn't told him yet. Bothered, Sil quickly gets some information about and claims he has no clue about what he implies. Unconvinced, Takumi sets up a sham and says it seems as though the children have truly become connected to him and he feels terrible for it however in the event that she is clueless, he ought to most likely hand them over to the halfway house. Yet again Sil hastily stops him and apologizes by getting kneeling down. He concedes he thought it was bizarre. She sent him to a positioned woods right all along yet he ran into no beasts he was unable to manage and incidentally ran into certain children. What's more, their status appears as human which was a similar dubious passage he had, making him certain this was Sil's doing. Gigantic props to Sil for the world's most horrendously terrible welcome party. He begins crying so Takumi requests that he account for himself as opposed to separating however Sil concedes he can't tell him all things considered. Shocked, Takumi asks Sil if somebody is driving his quietness despite the fact that he's a divine being. He reviews that there are five divine beings in this world, the Lord of Wind, the Lord of Fire, the Divine Force of Water, the Lord of Earth and the Lord of Creation. Since Sil is the Divine Force of Wind, he inquires as to whether there are different divine beings included. Shocked, he tells Takumi he's astounding and comments that those youngsters simply aren't ordinary and it was risky to leave them as they were. That is all he can say. 
Takumi consents to not ask any longer and inquiries in the event that he's permitted to engage with those children. Sil lets him know that he consents despite the fact that he's a retainer, he's very much like an ordinary human while living here so he shouldn't have any issues. Sil moans and says he's a lifeline and Takumi inquires as to whether his reality was a boon. Astonished, Shrewd inquires as to whether he's distraught however, he simply says he figures he ought to have told him all along. Notwithstanding this, Takumi inquires as to whether he can depend on him from this point forward on the off chance that he really wants anything which Sil enthusiastically certifies and vanishes. Takumi apologizes to Alan and Elena for the standby and says they ought to have a go at making a beeline for the Traveler's Society next. Takumi goes to the society where a secretary respectfully welcomes him and asks how she can help her. He makes sense of that he needs to enroll as a traveler alongside these children and inquires as to whether there's an age limitation. She concedes there isn't and requests that he finish up the essential structures. When he's finished, she requests that he stand by a second while their cards are finished. While they're pausing, Takumi tells Alan and Elena to not get frightened since he's with them before the lady gives them their society cards and instructs them to take care regarding them since they likewise act as their IDs. Takumi sees that he's level 11 since he crushed a lot of beasts. He understands there's an enrollment charge however comments that all his cash is in the stock. He reviews Sil letting him know that stock is a kind of room time wizardry, however a many individuals don't have this expertise and chooses to carry on like he's removing the cash from his pocket to try not to draw consideration. She uncovers the enrollment expense is free however it costs 200g for a substitution hearing which Takumi gives careful consideration to purchase a pack to use as a camouflage. The secretary makes sense of that the positions start at F and move up through E, D, C, B, and N, S. There is a SS rank above S however nobody holds it right now. On top of that there is something many refer to as a party wherein you can take on demands with numerous individuals. For this situation, the party's position will be the normal position, all things considered. Concerning the progression of work, you take a composed solicitation from the board to the front counter and play out the acknowledgement methodology after which they take on a solicitation. She adds that the composed solicitations have prescribed positions and you can take O demands dependent upon one position higher than your own. Other than that, you have things like gathering things and beast materials evaluated or sold in the society. She asks on the off chance that he has any inquiries however, he simply says he needs to enroll their party and names it White Wings. She enrolls their party and presents herself as Luna. She inquires as to whether they might want to acknowledge a solicitation today, yet Takumi respectfully says they'll do that tomorrow. While he and the children are going back, he comments that they ought to remain around here as travelers for some time. They head to a hotel and nod off together. The following morning, he offers the youngsters a decent morning, and they express it back, amazing Takumi since they had never spoken. He joyfully taps their heads and comments that this is a decent improvement prior to saying they ought to go to the society and acknowledge their most memorable solicitation as the White Wings Party. Takumi investigates the solicitations and inspects a task recovering restorative spices or beast materials, a task smothering assigned beasts which expects him to show a piece of the beast as evidence of progress and something important to shield individuals or things venturing out from one town to another or indicated areas. He inquires as to whether they ought to have a go at gathering restorative spices for their most memorable journey and meets Luna who offers him a good day. She requests their society cards and makes sense of they will require 10 lily grasses to finish this solicitation with a period cutoff of 3 days. Outside the town, Takumi chooses to make a beeline for a little backwoods Luna filled them in about and hello run into an ooze Alan and Elena begin playing with. Takumi grins in the wake of understanding this is a protected woods with just E and F positioned beasts. They find a lily grass and he shows the children how they should pick it so they quickly run off and accumulate some so he commends them for working effectively and they figure out how to gather a lot of lily grass in some time. He tells Alan and Elena they ought to stop for the time being. He makes some vegetable soup and horned hair sticks for them, choosing to go to town after this. At the organization, Luna is shocked by the amount they had the option to gather, and says it's really challenging to gather this much in a day so Takumi comments that the children helped as well. She gives them their prize seeing which Takumi comments that this seems to be a very decent take so they can undoubtedly get by without taking on any dangerous positions. 
Luna obligingly says she anticipates seeing them again before a beefy-looking loser hooligan shows up and asks what these imps are doing here. Takumi fearlessly ventures forward and expresses they're with him, doubting in the event that there's an issue. The man says this isn't some jungle gym for little rascals so Takumi comments that they're minding their own business and not irritating anybody yet the man irately says them simply being here is an issue for him. Luna tells the man, Dominic that squabbles are completely prohibited in the society however he irately advises her to close it. Takumi deep down comments that these sorts of individuals exist as well and makes plans to not create an uproar if conceivable however Dominic furiously snatches his collar and inquires as to whether he's attempting to begin something. Amazed, the children quickly rush in and kick Dominic away, stunning Takumi who briskly advises them to stop as Dominic falls oblivious. Apprehensive, Takumi inquires as to whether there's a punishment for causing something like this, yet she accepts it orders as genuine self-protection. The watchman from before shows up and is confused to see Dominic overdoing it. Luna speedily illuminates Takumi that Alan and Elena are crying. Surprised, Takumi briskly attempts to comfort them, yet they begin crying much harder and request that he not leave them. Astounded, Takumi contemplates whether they thought he flew off the handle at them and consolingly says he will not be leaving them. The gatekeeper asks about the circumstance so Takumi comments that there was somewhat of an uproar and presents himself. The watchman says he's the commander of the second unit of the Siren part of the Guardian Knights, Grunwald Reuven. Subsequent to realizing the reason why the children were crying, Grunwald inquires as to whether he's the sort of fellow who'd forsake these children yet Takumi speedily tells him to not paint him as a miscreant and concedes he doesn't know why the children thought he planned to leave them. Grunwald inquires as to whether they're his kin however Takumi uncovers that he met them without precedent for Gaia Woods in spite of the fact that he doesn't know whether they were deserted or lost. Grunwald caught wind of a carriage as of late getting gone after in Gaia Woods and Lunar reviews how a gathering of slave merchants traveling this way from Argo Realm were gone after by beasts out and about. He questions assuming that these two were dropped from the carriage to occupy the beasts and on the off chance that there's any issue in him taking them in. Luna comments that they don't give indications of being slaves and are likely vagrants and Grunwald says everything is good to go whether Takumi needs to leave them at a halfway house or deal with them himself. He consents to vouch for graduated class status as a watchman and gives his statement, requesting that they call him Wald. Luna quickly inquires as to whether he figured out how to accumulate any material from Gaia backwoods and he had some red wolf material, stunning her. Her eyes unexpectedly light up as Wald advises Takumi to offer it to her since she's crazy for assets. She gives Takumi a gigantic compensation for the Red Wolf and inquires as to whether he came here to talk with the Guildmaster. He concurs and says he came here with respect to the campaign and makes sense of for Takumi that they dainty out the beasts in Gaia occasionally since it would be an issue in the event that they were let be and begun pouring towards the town. He adds that the Timberland is a positioned and there are just so many individuals they can take with them, which is the reason Takumi is coming too. Stunned, Takumi swiftly says he's F positioned so Wald says there ought not be any issue on the off chance that he can go kill the Red Wolf. He goes to meet the Guildmaster and says he'll ask for him later so he shouldn't have a go at taking off. Takumi inquires as to whether he can reject an authority demand, so she concedes he can however a solicitation from the request for knights is a solicitation from the country. He worryingly contemplates whether Alan and Elena will be okay and chooses to leave so Luna advises him to bring back additional interesting materials next time for her. In the meantime, Wald meets the guildmaster and says he needs to accumulate swashbucklers to no one's surprise. He likewise puts an extraordinary solicitation for somebody named Takumi Keano. The guildmaster concedes the name doesn't sound recognizable so Wald makes sense of he's a F-rank newbie however that doesn't be guaranteed to mean he's normal. Shocked, the guildmaster inquires as to whether he's platitude he recognizes this man, 